Bad habits, they're really easy to develop, but they're hard to live with. And the opposite of that is true. Good habits are hard to develop, but they're easy to live with. And this is why when we got rid of the bad habit, we didn't fill the space and replace it because it's really hard to develop that good habit, isn't it? How do we get rid of the bad habits that maybe are giving the enemy access into our life? Number one, write it down. We got to acknowledge it. You just got to acknowledge it and repent. So you got to acknowledge it. Ask first, man, because you cannot defeat what you cannot define. Let me say that again. You cannot defeat what you cannot define. So maybe we don't recognize the destructive habit because it's so normalized in our life. We've normalized it, but it's robbing us of our freedom. And maybe it's, it's, it's an area that maybe you wouldn't even think, like, it, like you just said, ah, oh, no, it's fine. It's normal. It's not a big deal. Maybe it's attitudinal. Maybe your destructive habit is actually an attitudinal habit. Maybe, it's, maybe you, have a, you have a critical spirit. You like to say you're a realist, but really you're just a negative person who doesn't walk by faith. Was that too hard for you? I'm sorry. Okay, so may, maybe, maybe you're, you're, you're a complaining person. Maybe you are a gossip, and, and there is a destructive habit that you have. It's attitudinal that, that if you let this destructive habit continue, it's going to destroy your relationships. It's going to destroy your purpose. You, maybe it's overeating. Maybe you can't walk by the sweets. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's the ice cream. Maybe it's fast food and snacks, and maybe there are things that are dominating you that if you don't get a hold of it now, then, then it's going to come back later, Okay. We, that, are, that are just dominating us. Maybe it's technology. But every one of us are probably addicted to technology. Okay, because it was fun at first, but now it's ruining your relationships. Now, it's, now it's, it's hurting, okay? So many people, it's so accessible, technology. And here's the problem with this, with uh, the, the way that we're dealing with technology right now. Because every, humans, we have this need to please people. We want, but it used to be years ago, decades ago, we used to just want to please the people in front of us, the people that matter, the people that were in our life, that we were doing life with. But now we want to please the 16 million people that we don't even know. And this is so destructive. This is so unhealthy for our mental, emotional, and spiritual health. We have maybe some habits for, with, with technology or video games or you're binge watching or you're, or you're looking at porn through it or, or you're... you're Maybe it is just the mobile device itself. It's the phone. You cannot go without it and checking it and checking it. Or maybe it is a substance. Maybe it's a substance that you've normalized, like sugar or caffeine. <laughs> or maybe it's that prescription that you should have stopped years ago. Or maybe it's that alcohol that you said isn't a problem. But if more than one person is telling you it's a problem, it's probably a problem. James 1, 21, so get rid of every filthy habit and all wicked conduct. See, the problem is you're like, well, Master, that's the problem. I got like 27 of them. All of them you listed right now are my bro. <laughs> what am I going to do here? Can I tell you? Just focus on one at a time. That's it. Give God just one, just one at a time, and you got this. Submit to God and accept the word. Don't get defensive. Don't defend it. Don't, don't reject it. Don't check out on me. Don't toot out on me right now because you don't want to hear it. Accept the word because it has the power to save you is what it says. The truth will set you free. This word has a power to save you. You acknowledge it. Hey, this is a problem. I'm going to stop acting like it. It isn't. And I don't have to live this way. I don't want to live this way. You acknowledge it and you repent. Now listen, remorse is not repentance. Just because you feel sorry, remorse is when you feel bad, but you didn't change the pattern. Okay, repent is where you change the direction, you change it, okay? So how do you then change the pattern? Because I acknowledge it and I repent, but how do I change the pattern? Write it down like this. The second thing is you gotta remove the trigger. That's how you change the pattern, you remove the trigger. James Clear in his book, Atomic Habits, you should read it if you're really serious about this, you wanna get some more tools, but he shares five primary ways that habits in our life get triggered. And if you understand what's triggering, those bad habits, then you can actually remove those triggers and cut off the habit from happening. So what are the five? Not in your notes. I'm gonna give you a lot of extra notes today, okay? Number one, the big trigger is time. There are certain times of the day that habits are triggered. For instance, the big one is morning. In the mor Your morning routine is a habit. You do things habitually in the morning the same way in the morning. And some of those things are good. Like you brush your teeth at the same time the same way. Praise God. I hope you have that habit. You have certain, and then, but some of them are bad. 
So some of you have the habit of the first thing you, you do when you wake up is you grab your phone and you scroll on social media before you get up. So there are certain times that, because because there that on that time, because you don't look at porn in your small group, you look at porn when you're bored and at home late at night. That time. That's the time where you need to be mindful of that. Okay, that's the first trigger. The second trigger is the place. There are certain places that actually are triggers for you for habits. And you need to identify what those places are because you don't overeat at the gym. That's not where you're overeating. That's not that place. Okay. You don't, you don't get high at church. I hope not. A good, a good example of this was David and Bathsheba. Remember the Bible says in a time when Kings go off to war, David was in the wrong place at the wrong time, and it's something triggered, didn't it, okay? So, so you gotta be careful of the time, the place. Number three is your mood. You are more vulnerable to certain things, some of these destructive habits, when you are in certain moods. The habits are, it's actually an acronym. It's HALT, H-A-L-T. It's whenever you are hungry, you are angry, lonely, or tired, HALT. You ain't in a good place. You better get out of that place. Don't make decisions. Don't you get, protect yourself when you are hangry. How many know hangry, right? Hangry, hungry, hungry, lo, lonely, or tired. You got you to get yourself out of danger. You're in the wrong mood. That's going to trigger a destructive habit. Number four is the moment. Moment, meaning you do the same thing after that moment happens. Like, so you have a bad day at work, really stressful. Boss comes down at you or something. You go to the same drugstore and get your brand of liquor because that's, you just do the same thing. It's, your, it's, it's what you do. Or after your fight with your husband, you call your girlfriends and have a man bashing party. It's a trigger. It's just triggering it, right? Okay. Or after the softball game with the guys, you go get drinks. You, get, you just got to know the triggers, man. There are certain moments that happen that trigger the habit that you need to realize and cut those triggers off. You got to remove the triggers. And the fifth one, the last one is people. There are certain people in your life that trigger your destructive habits. If you've got the wrong people, you're going to go in the wrong direction. The, the study on this is so conclusive. The closer you are to someone, you are, the, the more likely you are to imitate their habits. Okay? It's almost impossible to live the right kind of life when you have the wrong kind of friends. Proverbs 4 says it like this, do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evildoers. He says, avoid it. Don't even go near them. Don't travel on it. Turn from it. Go a different direction. Remove the trigger from your life. If you want to remove the habit, remove the trigger. Break the pattern. But then you don't stop there. This is why many of our, our what is it, our New Year's resolutions and maybe even our habits that we've tried to fix and we tried to get rid of and it works for a while and it doesn't because you stopped here at removing the triggers and removing the habits. Don't stop there. You got to do this third thing, which is replacing the space. You got to replace the space. Because what happens when you remove the move, the time, the place, the people, all these things, it creates a void in your life and in that space. It's called a vacuum effect. It's going to want to be filled by something else. And if you do not fill it with the right thing, if you don't fill the space, then you, that thing will come back knocking on your door. Or maybe even something worse can come back in. In fact, Jesus actually talked about this in Luke chapter 11. It says, he said, when an evil spirit leaves a person, let me time out right there. I am not saying that your habit is an evil spirit. You don't need to cast out the demon of cigarettes. You need to be a man and stop smoking already, okay? You need to, you need, okay. But here's what you need to realize is that habit is creating the avenue and open door. That destructive habit is creating the open door for spirits to access your life. That's what you need to realize though in all this. So Jesus is saying that, he says, he says, when an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes into the desert searching for rest, but it doesn't find none. So it says, I'll return to the person because that's what de demons want a body to inhabit. So they'll go search for the person I came from. So it returns and finds that its former home is all swept and in order. Then the spirit finds seven other spirits more evil than itself. And they all enter the person and live there. And so the person is worse off than before. What is Jesus describing here? 
He's not saying this is just how it has to be. What he's saying is this phenomena that happens when you remove the habits and you get your life clean and clear, but all it is is in order. You didn't fill the space. You didn't fill the space with, with God's word or the Holy Spirit, and you didn't fill with some freedom habits I'm about to give you. So, so when they do try to come back, the, the space is full. It's occupied. They can't enter here. Okay? Here's, let me say it like this. Bad habits, they're really easy to develop, but they're hard to live with. And the opposite of that is true. Good habits are hard to develop, but they're easy to live with. And this is why when we got rid of the bad habit, we didn't fill the space and replace it because it's really hard to develop that good habit, isn't it? Like good habits, they're hard to develop, but easy to live with. Like getting up in the morning and working out or going on a run when it's cold. That's hard to develop, but it's easy to live with because nine months later, you've lost some weight. You got to buy new pants and you look good. And you feel good. And you're thinking good, okay? Going to church, man. I got, hey, what, make a habit. I'm gonna go to church, but, but it's easy to not, right? You're gonna go, but what happens if you do, if you make that habit to come to the house of God, worship God, hear God's word? Well, sometime like your marriage is actually gonna be better. You're gonna have peace of mind and peace in your heart because good habits are hard to develop, but they're easy to live with. Bad habits, on the other hand, they're easy to develop and hard to live with because you could, you could relieve your stress by smoking. You could, you, could, you could smoke weed, you could vape, you could do whatever. It, it'll relieve your stress in the short term, but in the long term, decades later, until you get diagnosed with cancer or lung disease, okay? So it's, it's easy to develop, but it's hard to, to live with, okay? You can relieve your stress by eating food and continue to do that. You can, you can pile on the plate and it'll feel good in the short term until you get diagnosed with di- diabetes or lose a foot. It's a hard topic today, ain't it? But I want you free, you guys. I want to see you free indeed. And if we are going to be free, then we have to remove some of these destructive habits from our life. 